So I'm going to start off with um, one of the more common alarms and it's, it's no battery. And this inverter is always looking for the battery and it needs the battery to do its job properly. And there's two interfaces between the battery and the inverter, one being the power cables and the other being the CAN communications. One of my other videos have highlighted some of the issues you can get with CAN communications and how to troubleshoot it. And this video is focusing on um, some of the other alerts and no battery where you can have a break in the in the power cables and that can be at the on on the battery side so the inside a lot of the batteries there is an isolator which can open and close depending on the state of the battery and so forth and then the circuit breaker which is what I'm going to trip now to to simulate a no battery alert but you can also have like loose connections here for example which will cause a no battery alert um, so I'm just going to simulate it now and we will see you on the inverter now so now that's breaking the connection and we heard a click. Okay, so we've zoomed into the screen here and you can see that the, the alarm on the inverter is no battery. The other way to check a no battery alert is to go to the information screen. So you press enter to open information, uh, the menu, go to information, the top one, and that there is the battery voltage according to the um, inverter. So it's being measured here and it's the battery voltage here. And we've just opened the isolator between the battery and the inverter so obviously that should be low the inverter doesn't push it out unless you send a wake-up command it's a source that the battery is and that voltage comes from the battery and then here you've got the bms information screen which is recording that voltage but we've got that break in connection so it's it's another thing that you can work out if the bms is alive or it's a breaker so that's a small little hint that you can use to troubleshoot that Turning, back, turning the isolator back on, <clears throat> you'll see that the voltage immediately comes back up and that no voltage alert should, uh, that no battery alert should disappear um, in a moment. It, it might take a little bit of time, device waiting, but that will clear. The inverter, funny enough, was still powered when we uh, tripped the battery, the, ba the battery, and that's because the power supply for this inverter is either the solar or the battery. So if we did this at night time when there was no solar, unfortunately the inverter would have turned off completely even though you had grid and that means you would have to wait for the next day for the sun to rise for to troubleshoot what could have gone wrong um, or apply a 48 volt battery charger to the batteries to wake them up. Some of the other alerts you can get on these systems is a battery name fail. So if we just go ahead and select the wrong battery. So I'm just going to select pure drive. So that, that it cleared the other alarm, but we're just going to see, well, it didn't really clear the alarm yet, but there we go, battery name fails. So this is a different alarm and it's just because we force compatibility and your, your warranty on the device is void if you put the wrong battery on the system so this is bad practice but I'm just demonstrating um, effectively we've got checks in place to make sure that you do use the right batteries that are on the compatibility list that are compatible with us and in our choice of um, battery selection so if I go back to battery select and I go to um, what this battery is then it will get rid of that alarm There you go, no more battery name fail. So now it's back into operation. No, no battery and no battery name fail.